Well, we've got two weeks to go until the Cricket World Cup gets underway in England and Wales. My name is Gareth Jenkinson. I'm here at East Coast Radio and I'm joined by former Pro Tiers skipper Graham Smith. Really good to have you here with us today. Uh, Gareth, thanks for having me. We're going to start off by just chatting about the new format of the World Cup. We've got one group of 10 teams moving away from how they used to do it back in the past. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Obviously, every team is going to play all other nine teams once, and then we go straight to a semi-final. Do you think it's a better format as opposed to World Cup's past? I, I, I like the format. I mean, uh, World Cups are always long, uh, but I like it. It's nice and simple. It's good for uh, fans and, and people traveling over to, to know what's, what, what, what they can expect. They can plan for all the games they want to watch. I like the setup from a South African perspective as well. It mm -hmm. uh, kind of brings back memories of 92, you know, my sort of first World Cup that I, I, I really experienced as a youngster. Um, so I, 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 think it's a, I think it's a good one and, uh, and I like the fact that everyone's playing everyone. I think it will be a true test uh, then at the end of the World Cup. Some people would argue that you know, you're missing out on quarterfinals and more knockout cricket, but I guess after nine games you should really know, you know you're sorting the, the chaff from the wheat and know who should be there and who shouldn't be there. Yeah, I mean absolutely. I mean I, I like the fact that everyone's playing everyone. I mean having played in a couple of World Cups where it has been a bit uh, mixed and matched, you know you have a group here then you go to a group here and a group there. It's a bit complicated I guess especially for traveling fans to know where their teams are going to be and how they support them and you know, it's a, it, it does, from that perspective, gets complicated. But I like the fact that it's simple. I think cricket, you know, the more simple they make it for, you know, the, the cricket community, the fans going over, the players, it really just, you know, allows the cricket spectacle to take uh, highlight. Um, just looking at the Proteus squad in particular, there's been a lot of talk about it, obviously, over the last three months. And if they finally named the squad, big talking point was Hash and how much cricket he's played, obviously, with his father being mm. ill at the moment. He hasn't played a lot of cricket. He was included in the squad. Your thoughts on that? Uh, my opinion is that you have to take someone that experience, but he is going into the World Cup lacking game time. Yeah, I mean, uh, the game time doesn't worry me as much with someone like Hash. You know, he's uh, very experienced, obviously had a, a little bit of a tough time uh, personally. But, you know, I think the, the, the worry about Hash is kind of at that stage of his career now. You know, his body, uh, you know, mentally, he probably hasn't been at his best over the last period of time. So you'd really be hoping that, you know, maybe just getting mentally fresh and, and, and you know, getting away from the line line and be able to work on a few aspects of his own personal game and, and focus on that and, and, and overcoming some of the personal stuff that he's had to you know, endure over the last period of time will really mean that he'll be fresh going into the World Cup. The World Cup's a long tournament. Mm. Um, there is a number of warm-up games up front and, and the guys will probably have 10 to to 10 days to two weeks to prepare really intensely over in the UK. And that's the time as a player, you know, if someone with Hash's experience, that he'll really want to focus on and, and maximise and make sure that he, you know, he gets that right. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, someone like Anrich Nokia has gone and broken his thumb in the nets. You'd have to jog my memory. You were involved in two Cricket World Cups. If you ever saw that happen to anyone in the, in the squads that you were involved in just before the World Cup, and what do you say to a guy like that when he's right there on the cusp, he's been playing such good cricket, and then fate yeah, just feels that to you? It's tough. I mean, it, it really is tough for a young man like Addis. He overcame a shoulder injury, missed the IPL, had an opportunity there, missed that through injury, got himself fit and then broke his finger. So, you know, it, it will be tough uh, for him to overcome. That I guess, that you know, the one thing that, might benefit him is that he's young and he can really now push forward and strive mm. for for uh, you know World Cups to come. Uh, there's no way in terms of trying to trying to make him feel better at this yeah. stage. He's just got to he's got to ride out the time, get his body healthy, and and you know hopefully you know use this as motivation going forward in, in his career and, and you know want to achieve big things and playing World Cups. Hopefully will come for him. And then Chris Smith, um, uh, Chris Morris rather, gets a, an opportunity to come in and he's in the squad now. Um, when I wrote down my initial squad before they'd released the squad, he was a, a name that I had in my, my list of 15. Your thoughts on him coming in? Is he someone that could actually, you know, be someone we weren't really talking about but end up being a man who really delivers with bat and ball? I, I hope so. I mean, I, I think I've been a little bit critical of, of Chris Morris. Uh, you know, I just don't feel that he lives up, you know, to the talent that he has. I, I feel like, you know... You know, mentally he could be a little bit stronger, tougher, you know, especially playing for his country and the performances that he has put in. I think he's a far better cricketer than what he's shown us. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, he has that X factor. Let's hope at the World Cup that he, he goes out there and if he gets his opportunity that he really makes impacts with, you know, with both bat and ball. He is that type of X factor player that, you know, sometimes can win you a game mm -hmm. uh, and a key game at that. So, you know, maybe it's meant to be that yeah. he's got the opportunity and, and I'm really hoping that he, you know, he kind of proves me wrong and shows me what he's capable of in the next couple of weeks. 
on the injury front, it's been pretty interesting over the last week. You know, we're, we're waiting on Dale Stain and Kakisa Rabada. They're telling us they are going to be fine. What happens if they're not? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're not, we're not, we're not going to be happy because those are two <laughs> huge losses for, for the team. Um, you know, uh, both outstanding bowlers. I mean, when you look at our World Cup squad, you, you think outstanding bowling attack, but you take Stain and Rabada out, suddenly, mm -hmm. oof, you know, or Nokia gone, you know, uh, suddenly, you know, the whole dynamic will, will shift and change, you know, suddenly from trying to find your, you know, who your fourth and fifth bowlers, you know, you know you're trying to find who your frontline mm -hmm. guys are. Uh, and, and Duplessy and Otis Gibson and the, I guess the whole of South Africa will be you know, watching that with bated breath over the next couple of weeks, how they manage and, and if they do get ready. Um, just looking at the guys that have gone across, you at the IPL, obviously working. Um, our South African guys have done really well. You know, two, two guys in the top bowlers, Kakisa Rabada and Imran Tahir, and then Quinton de Kock in the top five run scorers. How good is it to have those guys delivering right before the World Cup? And, you know, to go from T20 to ODI shouldn't be too much of a difference. It's good for the team that they played so much cricket. Yeah, I mean, after sort of two months of 2020 cricket, one 50 overs is going to feel a long time for yeah. them. So, you know, really, I, I just, you know, I think Quinton obviously is going to be key, you know, with the gloves, you know, the leadership he plays on the field from behind the stumps, you know, his dynamic ability with the bats. I, I think he's been, you know, I, I picked him out at the start of the season as a guy that really needed to step up his game, you know, to move from a talented cricketer to a guy that consistently, you know, puts in performances. And I, and I think he's, he's proven that. He's looked uh, healthy, he's looked fit, he's, mm -hmm. he's motivated. And he's had an outstanding season here in South Africa, IPL. And you just hope that he's got enough sort of mental uh, capabilities now and he's fresh enough to go and, you know, hopefully, you know, have an outstanding World Cup. I mean, if he has an outstanding World Cup, you know, it's good, really going to impact a lot of other players around him. Obviously, the last two World Cups you were involved in, South Africa barred out in the, in the knockout stages. We haven't won a World Cup before. In terms of the psyche and the mentality, how do they, they go about dealing with that? It, it's always spoken about. Every time the World Cup rolls around, there's always the, the choker tag that gets thrown around. How, how, do, they, how do they deal with that? I, you know, I, I think the reality, you just said it, it's just it's something that they're going to have to deal with. You know, having been there myself, it's, it gets frustrating because you have to answer the question 15 times every mm. press conference, every interview. So, you know, just uh, I think the, the key is just to just to almost just you know move past it and focus on what you can control. I, 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 in my memory, I don't think it ever affected us uh, by the frustrations of having to deal with it yeah. on a daily basis. But, you know, uh, from 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 Faf and the team, you know, they got to focus on what they have within the environment, the quality. It's I think it's a nice setup for them. You know, the key always is to just try and get yourself into that knockout game, that semi-final. And then it's on the day, you've got to put in a performance, you know, and uh, I think South Africa, you know, you look at the team, I think in particular there's enough X factor there that, you know, on, on, a, on a big, you know, matchup uh, on a day, we, we have enough quality to be able to, to get over the line. I, I, I think there's a few things in our favour, the ones, the setup of the World Cup this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have an outstanding bowling attack uh, that, that has the ability to, to take wickets and also conditions. You know, sometimes you go to the subcontinent and you know it's going to be tough to beat yeah. in India, Pakistan or Sri Lanka in those conditions. But I think in England, wickets are going to be flat and I, and I think we have enough. Um, you're going to be going across to the World Cup next week, working with Supersport as an analyst. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how busy your schedule is and, and how, how much you're looking forward to being involved from a broadcast side of a World Cup. Well, I mean, you know, Supersport are putting a whole lot of stuff into the build-ups of World Cups and the coverage and, you know, lots of analysts and stuff. I'll be over at, at the, well, in England, I'll be working on the on the world feed, uh, but doing stuff for Supersport as well, hopefully some behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, build-ups to games, uh, live at the venue. So, yeah, we're very excited. And obviously, you're always trying to, you know, bring the best coverage and the best information to to the viewing public, especially the South African fans, you know, you want to provide some really good insights. Yeah. Uh, how people will be thinking, how they'll be feeling, you know, conditions. You know, really, hopefully, we can we can we can take people into the, into the live event that, that aren't able to travel across. Mm. Obviously, you were heavily involved with the Pro Tiers setup for many many years. How much of a of an in angle do you still have over most other analysts? Are you chatting to the players <laughs> constantly? Well, I mean, I'm hoping that my in angle is my actual brain, <laughs> uh, my cricket brain and how I, how I view the game and that yeah. people actually like to hear the way sort of I see it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's always, I guess, the in interesting part and, and the feedback is always important. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I still have really good relationships with a lot, with a lot of the guys, uh, played a number of years with them. So uh, I'm sure I'll be in uh, contact with a couple of them, hopefully grab a, grab a beer when they have a, a downtime, uh, <laughs> which is probably very little uh, over the next period. But uh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you know, let's hope we get a chance to celebrate with them uh, on final day. 100%. East Coast Radio. Radio.